U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson landed in the country at 5 p.m. yesterday looking energetic. He proceeded to pay a courtesy visit to President Uhuru Kenyatta at State House, Nairobi, before holding a press conference at Villa Rosa Kempinski in Westlands. His diary for the next day was already planned. Tomorrow, on behalf of the American people, I will pay my respects to those who died 20 years ago in the U.S. Embassy attacks here and in Dar es Salaam. Tragically, we still are confronted with the face of terrorism. But come today, all his scheduled events, including a site visit to PEPFA, a U.S. program that works to fight AIDS in the continent, a meeting with the U.S. Embassy staff, and a working lunch with Foreign Affairs Cabinet Secretary Monica Juma, had to be cancelled as he is unwell. The Under Secretary of State Steve Goldstein says Secretary Tillerson is feeling unwell after long days of working on major issues such as North Korea. But even as those planned events are rescheduled, the question whether his arrival on the day President Kenyatta and opposition leader Raila Odinga buried their political differences was a mere coincidence or not continues to linger. This is what he said yesterday when probed about the U.S.'s role in the monumental event. Well, I think, you know, the U.S. obviously has been very supportive of Kenya's journey moving forward after what's been a difficult election period. And we were very, very encouraged and pleased to see the two leaders come, to get, come together today. But I think we really want to give them the credit. Uh, this was very important, I think, uh, action on their part to show that they're ready to work on behalf of all Kenyans, regardless of party, and begin to really take this long journey that's necessary to restore the country, eliminate these divisions that are creating obstacles to Kenya's future. And so I really, all the credit goes to the two leaders this morning that came together in a, in a very important agreement. However, during his talks with President Kenyatta, Tillerson expressed the dissatisfaction of the U.S. government following the move to shut down Kenya's leading television channels, including Citizen TV, NTV and KTN, during the mock swearing-in of Raila Odinga as the people's president. The decision was seen in many quarters as an attempt to shrink the democratic space in the country against the edicts of the Constitution, but the government insisted it was a treasonable event which threatened the country's peace and security. Uh, first of all, I think the definition of, de of democracy goes way beyond the media. Uh, but also, uh, the provision of free press in this country is secured within our constitution. And uh, the incident that is being referenced here is a one-off incident. It's an incident that uh, affected three of more than tens of TV stations in this country. It is a matter that uh, involved investigation of the police. And you will know, if you operate in this environment, that we have perhaps the largest media core anywhere on this African continent. So the notion that there is a restriction of the media in Kenya is actually not backed by fact and reality. Tillerson is on a five-nation tour of Africa that includes Ethiopia, Chad, Nigeria and Djibouti. Sylvie Chibet, Citizen Weekend.